What's up my otters? This is the cold email mastery course and in this specific video I'm going to be walking you through deliverability and setting up email accounts for sending. This is going to be one of the most critical videos because if you screw this up you are going to be in big trouble for the rest of your campaign. It's also the most technically difficult thing to do uh, with cold email because there's DNS and DMARC and DKIM records that you have to not really know and understand but at least be able to implement. So without further ado, let's dive in. And by the way, if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe. Be sure to start this cold email mastery course from video one and follow it all the way through so that you can become a cold email master and generate unlimited calls on your calendar for $5 per call. All right, let's dive right into it. Deliverability. How do cold emails actually work? Uh, before I show you my screen and walk you through the setup, it's good to understand the elements and components involved in cold email. So there's the domain, which is the .com or .io that you're sending from. I recommend always using a .com. So other than the domain, there's the server, and you link them together to send that cold email. Uh, so the j at otterpr.com is the sender address, and Google is the server that we're using to actually deliver that email. Both of those things need to be warm in order for that cold email to reach the inbox. So these are separate things. You can set up your email domain on GoDaddy and buy an account there and then send it with servers from Amazon or Google or whoever you want. I'm going to show you exactly what we do. And if you follow this recipe, you're going to be successful. But it's good to know that these are different things. A domain can be warm with an unwarm server. A server can be warm with an unwarm sender account. And if one of those things is unwarm, you're going to land in spam. So follow my instructions and I guarantee you're going to land in the inbox every single time. All right, welcome to the technical part of this. As you can see, I'm in Google domains. I've got my G Suite pulled up as well. If you're not already in here and have accounts with Google, create one singular account that you're going to use for all of your cold email purchases. Uh, for us, it's scott59 at otterpr.com, just a random domain that we use. And that is our master cold email campaign. We keep all of our cold email domains in here all of our users within this singular G Suite account. So I recommend that you do the same. It makes the setup and scaling very, very easy. In terms of choices on where to buy domains and set up sender accounts, I definitely recommend Google. There are other options. Some other options are cheaper, like SiteGround or HubSpot. You can do them for a dollar, two dollars per month, whereas Google costs six dollars per month for each sender account. So we have like 70 in here times six, that can get expensive monthly. But it's Google, we know it's trusted, it's simple to set up and scale, turn off and on, and the deliverability is really good. And if you're using cold email appropriately, you can spend on this, believe me. All right, so I'm gonna walk you through each step from purchasing a domain to setting up that sender account and adding the DKIM, DMARC, uh, and DNS records. All right, let's get right into it. All right, I like using domains that are really similar to my current domain, which is otterpr.com. In dash sounds like you're in. I also like o dash c dash, just something really simple. Uh, Facebook does the same methodology. You do not want to use your actual domain. So do not send cold email with ours is otterpr.com. We would not use otterpr.com to send cold email. There's a lot that could go wrong. Things get marked as spam. You get put on flag lists. You don't want that to happen to your primary domain. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and purchase this, and I'll see you in a second. All right, really important, guys. Uh, I'm, I'm in the, the cart right now. It's going to ask me privacy protection, auto renew, and then custom email in Google Workspace. We are not going to click this. I'm going to teach you how to set up that custom email in your G Suite so that you can scale this quicker and add those DNS records automatically. All right, so now I'm going to go ahead and check out. I'll see you in a second. All right, team, success. We've got in-otterpr.com. It is in my do Google domains. I can go back and see it in all the domains. So let's do some initial setup here. Again, we're not going to do get workspace here. Uh, so the basic thing that we need to do first, first of all, I'm going to change the website forwarding. Uh, when somebody Googles in-otterpr.com, since that's where they're getting the email from, we want them this to go to my main domain, which is otterpr.com. This is going to be a permanent redirect. And turn everything on. Now when you go to that domain, it's going to automatically bring you to my main domain and make this look a lot more legitimate. 
Perfect. Looks like it's working. That's my website where they will go when they search in otterpr.com. All right, now let's go over. I'm going to copy the domain and go over to our Google Admin Console. Now, under Account, this is G Suite. If you don't already have one, please sign up for it. Account, Domains, Manage Domains. So, because we're signed into the same account, uh, it already knows that I own that domain. So, they're linked together. So, we're going to go ahead and add this domain here. Okay, I added it and it verified automatically. There we go, because we're signed into the same account. Again, look how seamless this is. They just work together. Now I'm going to activate Gmail, set up MX record. It's going to do this for me. That is awesome. Okay, we're signed in. Look at this. It's going to connect the Google Workspace to Google Domains. All right, one click connect. Look at that. Now let's go back to Google Domains and see what happened here. So a couple of records that you're going to want to make sure are in your DNS are not only the MX records. So here's Google Workspace. It put those MX records in there for us, which is awesome. Now it's actually going to be able to send. We've got a DKIM record. Great. Now the only thing that we're missing are the DMARC record. We need a DMARC record in here and I'm going to show you how to do it. All right, to create a DMARC record, we're going to use mxtoolbox.com. It's free. Uh, I also have a DMARC monitoring tool if you guys are interested. It is dmarcreport.com. Uh, but for the sake of this, we're going to use the free one. mxtoolbox.com. We're going to put in the domain here, check DMARC record, and then it created a record output for us. So we are not going to uh, use their tool. We're just going to set this up by hand. So let's go ahead and do that. So one thing to note here is that the host is going to be dmark.inotterpr-.com. Uh, and I'm going to show you why this can get confusing, but I'm going to go ahead and copy this. Remember that we don't want to quarantine or reject any emails. This is always going to be set to none unless it's your main domain. All right, so let's go back to the domain. So type txt host name just underscore dmark. We're not putting in that whole thing it gave us to copy. Data, we're just going to paste and then save. All right, and now we have a DMARC record set up. It looks valid. This is going to increase our deliverability by a ton. This, if you're gonna pull one golden nugget out of this, is make sure that every email you're sending has a DMARC record attached to it. All right, and the final step, we're back in our G Suite. We've got our domain. Now we can go ahead and create a user. You can name this whatever you want. Um, I like to stick with the same person under multiple domains. It keeps the messaging really simple. Uh, they're able to monitor that in their primary inbox when that's done. Uh, but this part is easy, guys. So I'm going to call it my own name, j at in .com. Really important, make sure that everybody has a photo. This is going to show up when you're sending. So attach a photo to every single email. All right, and we have a new user added, guys. Very, very cool, j at in otterprcom Now we're going to learn how to warm up this email in the next video. All right, if you're getting tremendous value out of this cold email mastery course, take one second, hit that subscribe button, turn on that bell notification so you never miss another video, and push that like button so that other entrepreneurs and founders like you can discover this cold mastery course that can change their business because I know it's going to change yours. Thank you so much for your support, and I'll see you in the next one.